Hey everybody, it's Tom. Yeah, I've been thinking, and y'all know I shoot my videos generally in, a, in one big day. But I got thinking about fishing and stuff and what's carrying on here. Now, where I live, you have, I don't know a lot of people, you have two fishing seasons. You have, you know, your warm summer open lakes fishing season. Then you have a cold season where the fish aren't, you know, where they are. They're suspended down in the, the deepest parts. And then, well, I actually have three seasons, sorry about that. And then you have your ice season. Your fish are still swimming around, but they're not so active. They don't bite so well. Now, as a survivalist, uh, bushcrafter, unit, whatever you want to call us, you got to think of these things. Not just carry a fishing kit with you. Well, I have a hook and I have, you know, fishing line. Hey, I can catch a fish. In the wintertime, you really, you can't find bait that easy. You can go to a golden rods. They have the ball on top. That's a gall. Inside that gall, there's a little worm, but you have to get a lot of them. And there's no guarantee in the wintertime you're going to catch anything. So, so anyway, it's hard to find bait. You know, getting through the ice and everything. And if you think in the wintertime you're going to chop through the ice or you're going to take your knife and just, you know, pound yourself a hole, think twice. The colder that blade gets on an axe or a knife, because I've seen a lot of them do it, the brittler it becomes. The more brittle it becomes, yeah. And uh, it will, you'll, I've seen axes just bust shatter. I've seen knives do the same thing, guys trying to cut holes through ice with their knives. And, you know, it, they get down in that hole and the blade's getting really brittle. They don't realize it. Boom, taint, gone. So, with that in mind, I've been thinking about it. And this is my general pocket kit. Like, if I just, I want to try an area. And uh, I want to try an area out or whatever. This is my general pocket kit. It's a double-sided Plano. Yeah, Plano. Uh, what is that? Thirty-two thirteen. So open it up. On one side you got like five uh, long compartments. On the other side, you got two long compartments and a bunch of little ones. Okay. So in these compartments here, I generally carry, you know, um, well, I got spinners, got some rubber bait on a spin top, I got some small rubber worms. I got a packet here. I'll show you that in a second. And over here I got some other different types of little bait through the little rapala. And I got these little guys off of uh, Wish. They're just grub looking baits. This side here. Now in here I got some uh, Berkeley rubber worms and they, they look like a, I've had unbelievable success with these. I've got some uh, rubber crickets in here that float. Been doing really good with them. And I have a couple of ice fishing jigs. Over in here I got some uh, bait fish looking lures. And there I got some uh, another Rapala. But these are small ones. These are set up for, you know, I, I'm not trying to catch five pound bass. I'm trying to catch the little one, two pounders around the edge of the shoreline. Now hooks, got sinkers of various sizes and lengths. And over here I have a little, uh, little Swiss Army knife has a scissor, nail file, and a knife blade. So that's that side of the compartments and the other side. 
Now, this little bag that I told you I'd show you. I get these off of Wish, too. They're like $3. You get 150 pieces of it. That's what comes in the little bags. Let me see if I can stop the wiggle. That's what comes in the little bags. They're a little red worm. It's maybe an inch long. Two inches long. I've taught everything from native trout to bass with these stupid things. I bought them just because I was on there one day and I said they were free. So I got a free bag and I bought three bags so far. I've given one to my brother. He's catching fish everywhere across America with it. So that's my, uh, what I call my pocket trial kit. Now the reason for this being set up like this is I've worked with this kit for years, okay? Let me readjust this for you. I worked with this kid for years. <clears throat> Been fishing with it, like, you know, the whole day fishing with it, because there's really everything I need in it. So on this side here we have the little white grubs, which look like a wax worm, which everybody knows. You know, ice fishing. The little red thingies. That's what I call them. Also in here I have three or four different colored these tiny bass assassins for panfish. When hooked on a jig head, they look like a little bait fish. The spinners of course you can't use in the uh, through the ice, but that's for other things. So this fishing box when I arranged it. I arrange it for both ice fishing, if I needed to be, or regular lake and stream fishing. Alright, here they are. A couple of these little ice fishing tube jigs, or whatever they call them jigs. That's all you really need. I have one in chartreuse and one in black, and that seems to be the colors I hit around here. And so like I said, I have these little bass assassin things. Tried it in the winter. Definitely tried it in the summer. It's not heavy. It's maybe a pound. It fits in a cargo pocket of your pants or a belt pouch. Now, as far as fishing rods and whatnot for survival fishing, I don't really. I have a, a telescoping rod. It's a medium weight, not a heavy, not a light. It's a medium weight telescoping rod that I put in my backpack. And I don't have it right now because it's still in the boxes from when I moved that's still sitting in my old house. But it's a medium weight telescoping rod and uh, I have a small ice fishing reel on it that you know, it cost me like five bucks. That holds up the eight pound test. And that's what I have on there, a contest. So I'm, I'm able to fish creeks, ice fish, lake fish, anything. I can fish. And if I happen to get natural bit, I don't need all that rubber crap. Which is your first thing you should do is, you know, check under rocks and whatnot. Look for worms, grubs, stuff like that. And use that first because that's going to be your best bite. Now there's a little bit too fishing, and um, it's kind of like hunting. I always thought of fishing as hunting, especially if I'm fishing brook trout, native brook, brook trout. So anyway, it's a little bit like hunting. You got to know the times of day, the weather, your fish. Like bluegills will bite any time of day, right? Wrong. Bluegills bite in the morning. They bite heavy in the evening, up till just about dark. You will find the occasional that bites after dark and in between them hours. Uh, bass. Bass are a very early, early morning fish. Like I'm saying from just before sun up till about 8, 9, 8 30, 9 o'clock in my area. And then they, they don't really, they're a predator. They like to get out there when the stuff is out. 
and then eating. They're also a very humid fish. They like to feed how I, at night, an evening, on a good humid night when everything starts to cool down. Bait fish will rush to the shoreline because the water is cooler. Or cool down, I should say. If you're fishing a lake and you watch along the shoreline as you're fishing, you'll see the wave run into the shore and come back out. That, that's not a uh, windblown, that's not a beaver, a muskrat, that, that's a, a decent sized bass rushing the bait fish on the shoreline. They'll push them right up into the shallows and take them and leave. And then they'll come back maybe 10 minutes, maybe 2 minutes, doesn't matter, but you'll see them come back. Perch, a day like today, we were supposed to be raining all day today. But on a day like today, perch love an overcast day, even in the wintertime. It's weird how they can sense that through the ice, but they can. Even in the wintertime, a good overcast day, you, you'll catch a lot of perch. Muddy water like bullheads and that. Perch bite better in muddy water because the bigger ones bite. Because they're predatory fish, and they know if they go out, they don't have much cover. So they wait for a muddy day, and... They'll start cruising on a muddy day because they have cover, the water's covering them. Even trout, people tell you you can't catch trout on, uh, you know, in the wintertime. When it's freezing cold. That's bull. I've caught plenty of trout in the fall, the winter. The only thing with trout in the winter, they like the bottom of the hole. And they like the bait to hit them in the head. So you might catch one instead of ten. And you really got a fish for them. Hot summer days, trout go to the bottom of a hole. Fish on the bottom. They'll be out in the morning eating flies, but midday they'll be at the bottom of the hole. And that's when you catch your biggest ones on a muddy creek. Um, bluegill, any kind of panfish. The lake is like it is over there now. It's just a mirror. They'll bite. Let the wind blow. They'll stop biting immediately. They don't like disturbances like that. So you got you got to know your fish. You got to know your water. You got to know your lake. You got to know the weather temperatures. If you want to be good at it, if you just you know if you're in a survival situation, any line in the water, I don't care what temperature gauge, whatever says. Any line in the water, you're actively pursuing getting rescued. So, I, I don't know, I was, I was thinking about covering the whole series on this, but I don't know if it'll go over. But, uh, yeah, that, you know, my fishing kit, basically, when I set my fishing kits up, they're set up for... Um, your three seasons of fishing, your hot weather, your spring and fall weather, and your winter weather. So this is Tom. Thank you for your time and your patience. We'll be back to see you soon.